One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. So this book was published, I believe, in 1962, and its author, Ken Kesey, was regarded, in fact, regarded himself, I think, as something of a bridge from the beatniks of the 1950s to the hippies of the 1960s. And this book is considered a very important work in the then-nascent counterculture. It is also, obviously, the basis for the highly acclaimed film of the 1970s starring Jack Nicholson. Now, do I really need to summarize the story of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? I mean, that movie is iconic after all, but if you haven't seen the movie and you aren't familiar with the story that the book tells, I will summarize the plot and I'm going to spoil it, by the way, so if you don't want spoilers, here's your warning. But uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is narrated by one Chief Bromden. He is the big Indian dude in the movie, and he is an inmate in a mental institution, he, and he is recounting to the reader the time uh, that a new inmate was introduced to the asylum named Randall P. McMurphy. Now, the asylum is overseen by what they refer to in the book as the big nurse, or Nurse Ratchet, a rather arctic personality who rules the uh, ward with an iron fist, but McMurphy will not uh, kowtow to Nurse Ratchet. He will not allow himself to be cowed and um, brought into submission like the other patients on the ward, and so he rebels, and he begins a campaign of defiance against um, the system, basically represented by Nurse Ratchet, um, and this leads eventually to tragic consequences as uh, certain patients lose their lives and uh, McMurphy ends up making an attempt on Nurse Ratched's life before he is lobotomized and then ultimately um, killed himself in an act of mercy by um, Chief Bromden, the narrator. Uh, so this book is a very well-written book. I'm going to give it to Ken Kesey. He could write this book is, um, like, like I said, a first-person book. Uh, but it is told in a very distinct voice, and it doesn't always use proper grammar, but it actually works uh, to the book's benefit because it makes it all that more memorable. Uh, and it also has some very nice imagery in this. This is a kind of an imagistic book in some ways, and there are lots of really excellent metaphors, I think, that Ken Kesey utilizes, uh, utilizes in this book in description and such. Uh, as well, the characters in this book are, I thought, rendered with um, more than a couple of dimensions. Uh, the narrator, Chief Bromden, uh, is pretty well-rounded. We definitely do get um, adequate backstory with him, and we kind of understand how he thinks and such. And then, you know, McMurphy is just this larger-than-life personality that dominates the book, because uh, Chief Bromden in this book is mute for almost the entirety of the story because he pretends to be deaf and dumb so that people won't address anything to him and he can kind of eavesdrop on people without having to engage other people in conversation and such. So everybody for the majority of the book thinks that he is um, deaf and mute, but it's all just a ruse. And he is just kind of a passive observer for the most part of the book as he recounts to us the exploits of McMurphy and his uh, friction with the big nurse. Now, this book also has a running metaphor um, throughout regarding machinery and uh, mechanics because this book is considered something of a peon to individualism and nonconformity. Uh, and what this book ultimately is criticizing is society at large and the way that it demands conformity from its members uh, and the way that it kind of cracks down on those who don't fit the mold, so to speak. The, the metaphor which Chief Bromden continually refers to is that of the combine, which he uses to mean the, the workings of society, the mechanized whole of society, um, which is represented by Nurse Ratched in this. And by the way, Nurse Ratched's name is one letter away from spelling the word ratchet, which is, you know, a tool. 
Um, but it gets downright surreal at times, actually, in this, because he describes things that's so much in terms of mechanical function and operation. Uh, lots of, like, hallucinated machinery behind the walls and diodes and circuits and everything that's just metaphorically uh, illustrating to the reader how mechanized he views society and uh, how harshly it comes down on the heads of those that don't uh, comply. But overall, the writing of this book is really strong. The characters were pretty strong as well, I thought, and it's very entertaining. This is a very enjoyable book to read, um, and it really does keep you hooked. Uh, now, that being said, as much as I can praise this book on its technical aspects, I also have to say that this is a book that, despite all the positives that I can say about it, I cannot say that this is a book that I really liked. Um, and I'm going to explain that, but uh, just, you know, from a like I said, a technical standpoint, this book is remarkably strong. This is a very well put together book. Um, but now let's talk about some of the issues that I had with this book, because this is a book that has not aged well in the slightest. In fact, dare I say it, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest has aged like milk, actually. And this book rubbed me the wrong way in a lot of ways, but I'm going to explain that. Uh, but first of all, let's get two things out of the way. This book is, I think, incredibly racist, and it is damn sure incredibly sexist. So first of all, the the orderlies, the attendants in this mental hospital are all black, and uh, the way that they are portrayed and referred to is not very flattering at all. They are portrayed as these sneering little imps who just take, like, just sadistic delight in tormenting the patients. And it's, you just get a real sense of racism with this book. And I'm not, you know, you can argue that and you can say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's told through a certain lens, it's narrated by a certain character. But yeah, it, it does feel like there are some serious racial overtones with this, I mean, overtones of racism with this. Um, that's one thing, but now let's get to the real meat and potatoes of my issues that I had with this book and the, the way that this book treats women, which is frankly abhorrent, I find. So um, Ken Kesey had, I think, some serious problems, not only with black people, but with women. In fact, I think you can read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as something of a um, a reflection of its author's own paranoia regarding certain ethnic groups and the entire female sex, because the way, like I said, that this book treats women is pretty terrible, actually. Women in this book only come in two varieties, frigid, authoritarian bitches and whores. Now, uh, this book is remarkably uh, sexist in the way that it portrays Nurse Ratched as the uh, the figurehead of the Combine. But more than that, the book goes into detail about how uh, the, the, the men on the ward view themselves as the, the victim of the new matriarchy, they say. That's right. Ken Kesey really did seem to think that uh, somehow in the time period which this book was written in, which was late 50s, early 60s. Mind you, women could not even be approved for a credit card in America until the 1970s, about when the movie version of this came out. Yeah, Ken Kesey thinks that in this era that women had somehow henpecked society into a ballless uh, state of simpering wimpiness. That's kind of the overriding uh, theme behind this, or at least partly is that uh, the new matriarchy is uh, responsible for the misery and anguish of these men who populate this mental hospital. Um, again, I, I think that's just patently ridiculous, um, but it goes deeper than just that because the way that the book portrays women is that women in positions of power and authority is are... Uh, unnatural and need to be quite literally dicked down 
by men because that's there's great discussion in this about how you know nurse ratchet just needs needs a good lay uh to uh you know know her own rightful place and whatnot it's really kind of repugnant when you get down to it uh but then again the other you know the the uh, yin to the yang of nurse ratchet who is this sexless you know authoritarian figure we have the, the figure of the prostitutes or the horrors that uh, mcmurphy smuggles onto the ward and they're portrayed as just saints you know they're just because they give men sex uh which is you know the only purpose that women have at least by ken kesey's standards is just to you know put out for men um and like i said they're just saintly because they have sex with men unlike nurse ratchet and the other nurses in the hospital uh and it the mcmurphy's role in this book is to make the men reassert their dominance over the women in fact the ending to this book uh really left a bad taste in my mouth because of how abhorrent i really found it so if you've seen the movie you know that after the one patient named billy cuts his own throat uh, due to something that nurse ratchet had told him then mcmurphy loses his shit and tries to strangle her to death that's what happens in the movie and the movie is better than this book i think for that because it removed the kind of brutish uh sexual politics and made it not be so uh back asswards uh, but in this book after billy slits his own throat mcmurphy doesn't uh he doesn't uh, just try to strangle nurse ratchet no he rips open her shirt so that her uh, breasts are exposed to remind all the all the uh, dickless men on the ward uh that she is a woman and that uh, that bitch needs to be put back in her place which is what mcmurphy tries to do by you know attempting to murder her uh and again it was done so much better in the movie because it removed the sexual element from it but what you get at the end of this book is a man sexually humiliating a woman and then violently dominating her physically and i was just not down with that in the slightest uh and so it it served to actually make the ending hit me the opposite of the way it was intended because when they wheel mcmurphy back in after he's been lobotomized and he's just a vegetable now you're supposed to say oh my gosh look at what that heartless bitch did they they she she tore down the, the the male martyr of this book look at her but honestly i felt more sympathy for uh nurse ratchet in this book than i did for mcmurphy uh because mcmurphy is not a virtuous character and i want to get that out there uh seriously because you will not find a more individualistic uh uh, personage than myself i'm downright practically randian in my defense of individualism i love individualistic uh, philosophy and i would normally love books like this that promote values of individualism and um, you know going against the grain and such uh, but not in this case because mcmurphy is not virtuous the only reason he is heroic uh at all in this book is because the book allows ken kesey to set up a false dichotomy between you know the frigid bitch of the nurse and then the fun loving also rapist kind of mcmurphy uh and it's again it's a false dichotomy mcmurphy in any other setting this character would be like that kid that you kind of look up to in high school because he'll talk back to the teacher he won't do his homework he's just too cool for all of that but then you realize that kid's been in you know 10th grade for three years and he's headed for prison and you're like oh yeah he's actually kind of a loser that's what mcmurphy is like in this book if you actually think about it you know extend your thought beyond the parameters of the book uh, and also i just did not like the messaging in this book regarding uh masculinity because the the what ken kesey thinks the essence of masculinity is in this book is just violence and buffoonery 
which I mean, if it is to you, you know, that's fine. If you want to, that's how you get down fine. But to me, I'm a man and I don't particularly like violence or buffoonery, but to Ken Kesey, that's the essence of manhood. Um, and also just, you know, screwing chicks. That's, that's the whole point of women in this book that if they're not putting out, then they're basically just worthless. Um, and it's, it has not aged well at all. It hasn't, it, it has aged like absolute milk. Um, and so even though I would normally, you know, really be on board with a story about, uh, nonconformity and individualism, because I consider that reflective of myself to a great degree in my own personal philosophical outlook, not so with this book, because this book, again, it sets up a false dichotomy making something look heroic which isn't really heroic and also the just repellent uh, sexual dynamics behind this of uh, men needing to you know just dominate them bitches to get them back in their place and reassert their own superiority in society uh, because that's that K K Kesey basically says that's all the all the problems that the men in this book have that cause them to be you know, in this institution are because of women, you know, it's just, it's just women, women are blamable for everything wrong with the world. It, it just hasn't aged well. And the sweet irony of this book is that despite this being such a seminal work of the counterculture, um, this book is actually far more old fashioned and conservative at its heart than its author obviously thought it was. And that just, you know, is just priceless to me that this book is considered, you know, such a, such a, uh, uh, a baseline work of the American counterculture where, you know, kids, young people were going against, uh, you know, established customs, the sexual revolution and what have you. Um, and they weren't going down the same paths as their parents, but yet the messaging in this book is like almost kind of cavemanish. It really is. It's pretty dang regressive, I think. However, in the interest of impartiality, because again, I strive to be objective in my assessments of works on this channel, uh, this book is remarkably well put together. It, it really is. Ken Kesey was a, was a very strong writer. The way this book is told, the, the, the word choice, the metaphors that it makes, um, as well as the narrative voice are just really striking at times. Um, again, the plot is quite interesting. It really is a very enjoyable book to read. It keeps you hooked, but I just can't get behind what he's implicitly or not so implicitly saying with this book because it just rubbed me the wrong way. And again, that ending left a bad taste in my mouth. It really did. It did not hit like its author intended it to hit. Um, but again, in the interests of objectivity, I'm going to give One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest an A minus. I think it is a remarkably strong book, just one that I vehemently disagree with in certain key regards. Uh, but yeah, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Have you read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or have you seen the classic film with Jack Nicholson? If you have, let me know down in the comments what you thought about the book slash movie whether you have agreed or disagreed with anything I've said about the book here today. Um, and if you haven't read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, I can definitely recommend it. Uh, but I would forewarn you that uh, it may not sit well with you if you read into it with any depth. Uh, and actually, you don't actually have to go that deep because most of its sentiments are, you know, worn on its sleeves, basically. So you don't have to pick it apart that deeply to get to the kind of uh, noxious uh, meat of it. But uh, anyway, it's an enjoyable book. It is a classic for a reason. It's a remarkably well-written work, uh, but it is one whose values I don't think have aged all that well in retrospect, but uh, I can still recommend it. And as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, Peace.